under Coach Smythe? Yeah, <clears throat> like I said, I watched only two games, so I have to see a little bit more um, about the style, how they played. But uh, my idea is to play uh, a 4-2-3, a 4 2 3 one system. And uh, I could see in those two games that uh, the individual skill of every single player is good. Um, technically, they are pretty good, 90% um, of, the, of the players. Tactically, I think that we have to work a little bit, and I think, uh, like I always said, uh, um, you don't win championships with uh, one single player. It ha always has to be a team. You know, you, you, you can have the best player on your team, but it doesn't mean that you win championships. So you have to form a team uh, to make that happen. And that's actually my biggest uh, task that I would like to uh, accomplish to form that we have a team that everybody plays for everybody. And uh, that will be something that we need to work on in the next couple of weeks. Good morning, I'm Bob from uh, Yahoo. Uh, I'd like to ask, do you see any similarities with the Philippine situation now, with the situation when you started playing for the U.S. in 1992, when it was a, when soccer was just picking up in that country? And um, do you think that your experience in that situation will help you in your role with the Ascals now? Yeah, that's a good question, and I um, I really see some similarities. Uh, maybe the U.S. were a little bit further because uh, they had already the World Cup, or they were getting the World Cup in '94. Um, but it's still uh, we had like in 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 the U.S. we had uh, 20 million kids who played soccer, and and it was organized youth soccer. So we started with U eight U seven teams uh, in the whole country. So it, they were a little bit ahead. But I know that um, we just talked about that this morning too, that the potential that this country has um, in developing players is huge. And uh, I know that basketball is the number one sport in, the, in this country, um, but not everybody can play overseas basketball in the professional league, but in soccer you can. So and I think this could be something for the future for the young kids to get involved in soccer. And, and everything has to do with uh, repetition. You know, it's, I always try to, to use uh, the, uh, the example, the metaphor with playing piano. If you're playing piano once a week, you can play a nice song on Christmas, but you cannot play on stage. So in soccer, it's the same thing. The more you play, the better you will get. And you have to get involved every single day to work with the ball. So and I think if we can get that into the head of the kids, that they can do that, we have a great potential in the future with, uh, with soccer here in, in the Philippines. Uh, PFF General Secretary. Thank you, Jeric. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to PFF House of Football and to our press conference this morning. Thank you also for coming despite the short notice. We appreciate it. Uh, going straight to the point, as you know, the uh, Federation and the National Teams Management are uh, in the midst of uh, preparing our national team uh, for the finals of the AFC Challenge Cup Maldives 2014 competition, which will be held in May uh, 19 to 30. Uh, to prepare for the competition, the uh, management and the federation uh, sought the help of a man who is very enthusiastic to give the help that we need. And so, without uh, further ado, may I call on uh, Mr. Mariano Araneta, the PFF president, to make the formal announcement or announcement. Uh, thank you, Ed. Uh, good morning to our friends in the media, to everyone. Uh, you know, we are, we are serious about the preparation for the Challenge Cup uh, because, uh, you know, this is a big tournament for the Philippine team. Uh, the winner of the Asian Cup, or uh, the Challenge Cup, will go to the Asian Cup in uh, Jakarta, in uh, Sydney, on 2015, and we hope to, you know, to win the the tournament. Uh, that's why we have to bring in fresh ideas to the team, you know, and uh, we that, that that's why we took the necessary steps to, you know, to to bring in the fr uh, fresh ideas like uh, bringing a, a new coach. To, to the team, and uh, with these credentials, uh, we hope that uh, 
you know, he'll be up to the task, and we're confident, and uh, I know that uh, everyone in the PFF, everyone in football, will be supportive of this move, and uh, I just ma want to reassure uh, the new coach that uh, he will have the full support of the Federation. And uh, with a, I'd like to introduce uh, our new coach, Mr. Thomas uh, Dooley. Thank you. Good morning. And uh, I just have to say that I'm very honored, humbled, and very excited to take this task. We heard it this morning already two times. Everybody knows it. The biggest and the, the shortest goal that we have is uh, winning the Challenge Cup because this is, a, this is the biggest step for, for the country. So I'm very happy to take this task and uh, it will be not easy because uh, on the paper maybe it looks like for us that we are maybe the favorite and the ones that should win that, but in soccer you never know. <coughs> so you can underestimate a, a team and we have to prepare right now. We have to get into the head uh, of every single player that uh, the biggest goal that we have in the next couple of months is uh, winning that tournament. So, like I said, I'm, I'm very honored to, to work with the team. I saw the team uh, two times, uh, the game against Hong Kong and the game against Kambodja. And uh, so I will have a little bit more, hopefully a couple more games in the next couple of days that I can get a really a good evaluation of every single player on, uh, on the team. So we, I know that a lot of the players playing Euro in Europe, I will try to contact them as soon as possible and talk to them about uh, my ideas, how we want to play, that also everybody thinks from now on <coughs> just for that tournament. So a lot of teams, a lot of the players are here in Manila. It's great for me to see. I can watch every single game and uh, every single player. So that's kind of uh, makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to form the team too. So that's pretty much at the moment from my side, if you have any questions. But uh, anyway, I'd like to uh, uh, get the comments from our national team. Uh we tried to set out any sort of a training schedule with the team, and have you met them personally, or you, you're saying you watch the game just on video? Yes, I watched the games on video last night, and uh, oh. so we will have uh, the conversation with the uh, with the owners of the or the coaches of the clubs, yeah. um, because if you train, if the team trains, some of the teams train only three times a week. There are still two times left a week where we can work something out, and the more we can we can play, the better the better it is. So and I think um, so if we can get the the next 20, 24 or maybe forty players, best players in the league, get them together two times a week. It doesn't have to you know, be that we are running all the time. It's more like a technical part that, you know, if you cannot receive the ball, you can't play. If you cannot pass the ball, you can't play. Those are the basics, the fundamentals in soccer. And that's what we have to do, to do perfect, to play the game. So and this will be the most, uh, the most part in my time over here with those players here in Manila to work on a technical part. And, uh, and that's, I hope, that we can agree with those uh, coaches that we can get them maybe one or two times a week to, to work with them. Can I have another question? Um, given the, I guess, the, the, the main goal right now for bringing you in is for the Challenge Cup, do you think you have enough time to get to know the players, to raise them to a level where you think they can win? Um, do you think you can do that? I mean, have you seen the Challenge Cup? Yeah, I mean, I, I, can see, I can see that. I can see that it will work out. Uh, and I know you don't need, uh, like, 25 games to know what kind of a player, what a player can do and what not. It's kind of forming the team. Then it's maybe the time is short because we don't have the players every day. So I have to wait until they're coming into the game against Azerbaijan and maybe to do 10 days or 12 days before we have the Challenge Cup to work with them. That's why I want to get in touch in contact with them right now. We don't want to waste any time that they understand how I would like to play and that they can think about already what kind of a system how we play, how the, the starting position is when you have the ball or the starting position when you don't have the ball and that we work together as a team. So we can do that via internet, via Skype, via anything to just to get it into the head how I would like to play. So I like to play, I love soccer. I love to play soccer. 
So that's what I want to do. I want to play soccer. That means not just kicking the ball. I want to get everybody involved in playing. So I, may, I want, would like to play out of the back. And I also, if we don't have the ball, I want to win the ball back in the next four or five seconds. That means that you know you want to also be, let's say, an offensive-minded attacking style of, of a game, coming back to your question in the beginning. So I like to play in there and half. Get the players away from our goal. If they have 25 shots on our goal, they might score too early. But if they cannot take shots on our goal, that's important. But that means you have to know how to defend. So every single one, like I said before, if individual skill that everybody has, he has to bring that into the team. Not for themselves. If somebody wants to play for himself, he should play tennis. But if you play soccer, that is a team sport. So everybody knows what my role is. So another example is for like a playing center back. I played center back too. So my job as a center back is that they can't score. So whatever I can do that they're not scoring, that's my job. If I can go forward and score a goal, that's a big plus, but not my job. My, my job is not let them score against us, whatever I can do. The one we played with four in the back, if he's in trouble or he's playing against the person, I need to help him. Same as the ball goes to the other side, to the middle, I have to help him. Because if I am one-on-one, -on -one, they helping me. So and that's what, if everybody understands what my role is in that team, that's when you start building a team. And I think that's when we can be successful. Last question. How difficult was it for you to make the decision when after you talked to uh, Dan? Was it did you have to like, was it hard to make a decision? Did you like think twice or, and what was it about the Philippines that you agreed and um, have you heard, have you have any contact with Filipinos in the US or know anything about us? Yes, uh, there was one player who actually, uh, his son played in our academy and I coached him a little bit. I coached him also privately and he was from the Philippines. And he was telling me all that you need to, you should come, you should coach for us and all that. I would love to, you know, but I haven't been there in the Philippines. I don't know a lot of about the Philippines. It was last summer. So and he's like, let me deal with it. Let me try to find out. I can maybe get in contact and all that stuff. But then since last June, I was trying to think about it. You think about, okay, what <coughs> could I expect in the Philippines? Maybe there's a, there's a league and I looked at the league and maybe because I want to get into coaching too. So and I think that would be something would be interesting. And when I met with Don and with Ed in LA, we had this conversation. And after the conversation, I just felt great because the support was there. The ideas that that I had and that they had was kind of the same, you know. And and like I said, I'm not just you want to get a job and you just want to coach a team. I want to be a part of something that it's a development, you know, development with young ones with younger ones, like the 20 years old one, 19 year old ones, even the 16 year old ones. But this could be the long term goal. The short term goal is only, there's only one thing, winning that Challenge Cup. Whatever it's necessary to get this thing done, we want to we wanna do. Yes, any more questions? Okay, you have to have the opportunity too, to show what you can do. So when I got one, I coached in the second division in Germany and the team was in the last place like three months before the end of the season. I had 34 players, they were nine points behind and uh, I didn't have an assistant coach and I didn't have anybody who helped and, and even the club had already signed up a new coach for the next season. It was very tough but we always made it in, into staying in the league and I said it from the beginning, as long as we have a chance to stay in there, I want to do it. So, and it was a great experience what I had in those four or five months. Then I worked with Jurgen Klinsmann together and uh, for five or si four or five or six games. And, and he did uh, a great job in, in changing the, the style of play from Germany. So he changed the system in the US, how we play. So and look how successful they are right now. And then I worked with uh, Tab Ramos with the U20 national team when we qualified in Mexico for the World Cup. So, though, and I was an assistant coach with that. So this kind of an experience that I have, uh, I didn't have the, like I didn't never coach a national team on my own or a professional team besides in Germany on my own. But I think what is very important is that you know how the players think. You know how the players think in a, lo in a locker room, 
what they think if they don't play or what they think if they play and they just going overboard. Um, this is very important part too. And one thing is like um, what I had my experience as a player, we had in Kaiserslautern, we lost almost all the games and we, we were in last place in, in Kaiserslautern. We got a new coach and with a new coach, we had 13 games and we won like 11 or 12. And a year later, we won a championship. So something happened in that team that made that made the change. They, we didn't change 10 players. We changed maybe two, three players, and we won a championship. So when I went to Schalke 04, the, the goal of Schalke 04 was like being in a tense place because a year before, they came from a second division. So when I came there, we had an interview too like this. They asked me, what is your goal with, uh, with, uh, with Schalke 04? Because you all achieved all your goals, and you were setting goals and stuff. And I said, I think that we can do the same with like Kaiserslautern. If we can build a team like we had it over there, we can be successful. How successful? If we can finish in fifth place. They all freaked out and said, this is amazing. That means we would play the UEFA Cup. So we finished that season in the third place, and a year later we won the UEFA Cup. When I took over a team, the academy team, U18 team in, in the US Development Academy, the team didn't win one game. A year later, we won the championship, and from 48 games, we lost only three. And there was something that I just put in in the, in the head of those players and formed that team. And I think that is, in my opinion, <coughs> enough to get a chance to try to build it with that team. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Sir Tom. Uh, more or less, you've given us the kind of uh, player you like. But uh, aside from skill and his team player, what other attitude will be crucial in selecting the members of this national team that will be playing the Mount Mal the, the what, what other attitudes <laughs> would be crucial in your selection of the player that will be competing for the Philippine Ascals in, in the Maldives? Yeah, well, I mean, there are four things that I have to consider and have to evaluate. One is uh, technically, you have to be good with the ball. If you cannot handle the ball, it's a little bit, it's difficult. The second thing is tactically that you understand what your role is in the game. If I have, for example, I have a center back who is always dancing up front and, you know, leaves the holes in the back, I need to talk to him, like, this is your position. You have to play that role, otherwise I have to have somebody else who's doing it. So he has to understand the tactical part. The, la the, the next thing is the attitude. You know, if everybody comes in and knows that it's a team, and I have to work my butt off to help to get the success, those are the players that I'm looking for. And the last thing is we have to be fit. If you are not fit, you can't play. It's almost impossible to play a professional game and play a national team game if you're not fit. So, so everybody has to understand, you know, in, when it comes May, I have to be in the best shape ever. Because it's not, it's not just because of the team. It's not just <coughs> because of us over here. It's because the whole country, they're representing the whole country. And the fans in the Philippines are proud and honored, you know, for this country. And we can actually do a great job to make them happy. And that's what everybody has to understand. And that's a lot of work. Uh, will you be bring in your own uh, coaching staff with you with the, or will you be working with the Filipino, Filipinos that have been left behind for the, for the meantime? Yeah, I will work with the, with the coaching staff that we have right now. In one hand, because I can get a lot of information about every player. And then later on, we have to find out if there is, is necessary to have somebody else in there. I mean, the time is short, but Right now, I just want to work with the players, with the, with the coaching staff that we have over here. Uh, last question uh, for the benefit of the gentlemen. We know that uh, it's a short and cramped time that you have. Uh, do you think uh, you will be able to, and considering we're, we have an ongoing league, uh, do you think two, two times a week and plus the other friendlies and tune-up games that you, will be sufficient time? And again, just to echoing what... Uh, this day and Castillo say. I mean, it's difficult. I'm, it's not easy. So it's not like uh, you know, if I would have the team every from now on for three months and work with them twice a day, that would be would be great. But I don't. I just have to deal with what 
the circumstances are. And right now I have only the players from Manila. I don't have them yet. So I would love to have them for at least one or two days a week that we can work on stuff and we can talk about stuff because a lot, some of the players are starters in the team. So, and the ones from overseas, we need to just have this communi uh, communication via phone or Skype, like I said, or email, just to get to know each other better and to understand where they, if they understand what I'm talking about, if they understand what I mean and how to you know, feel about it. So those are the things that I, you know, it's, I wish I had more time but I think um, I have to do the best I can with the time that I have. Sir Dan, uh, what was the final uh, tipping point or that uh, finally made you and the attorney decide that this is the man to, to lead our Ascals to the Maldives? Well, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Well, he, when we got to interview him, I think he came in prepared and he knew what he had to do to bring us uh, to the, well, to our goal, to our objective. So, of course, it helps that uh, he, had, he had a good career as a player, which means uh, all our professionals will, I mean, he will easily uh, get the respect of all our professional players, and he will also get to empathize with them when it comes to how it feels having to leave the club, play for the country, and all those things. But of course, uh, at the end of the day, when we look at how he intends to proceed with, with getting the objective that we have for the team, I think uh, the choice became clear at that particular time. Yes, sir. Uh, the gentleman at the back. <coughs> Peter Paul Patrick Lucas of Sports Radio. Good morning. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to know how you, uh, what's your nickname? Uh, can we call you Tom or what are you? How do they call you for short? Thomas. Thomas. That's the shortest. Just Thomas. Yeah, Thomas, you mentioned about the Filipino player that you coached who gave you fir first gave you the idea to uh, possibly coach for the Philippines. May I know his name, please? Uh, Austin, the player. Austin. Austin, yeah, Austin Munter. What's He's 16 years again? old. He could be a future national team player. Austin. Austin Monte. Monte. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, Mr. Dan, um, may we know uh, how long Thomas' contract is going to be? Uh, <laughs> what, what, uh, what have you agreed upon? Uh, is there going to be a contract? Uh, I, I, I prefer, how long years? I prefer the president to answer the okay. question. Okay. <laughs> uh, he's he's going to be at least for a year here. You know, one year. Yeah. Yeah. So he's going to coach the Challenge Cup team and hopefully the Suzuki Cup team. And if we win the Challenge Cup, all the way to Sydney for the Asian Cup. Well, uh, the Asian Games is the under-23, you know. Uh, right now, we have a new coach as well for the under-21, uh, under-2021, because we're preparing for the Southeast Asian Games in 2017, where we, hopefully we can participate. Uh, 2000... No, 17, we're saying 17. Because 15, there still be the officials that don't want us to go. So anyway... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 2000, 2017, we're preparing, you know, we have to prepare four years from now. And then, uh, so we have a new coach. Uh, he's, uh, he used to be a, a club coach in Australia. His name is Jim Frazier. Uh, he's, uh, he's also here in, in, right now in the country to look at the, uh, the, the, ma the materials for under 20 or under 21. Is the Asian Games also in your radar for Mr. Dutton? No, not yet, in the Asian Games. You know. just, uh, we just have to focus first on the three. Yeah. Yes, uh, next question. Yes, and then April. Uh, Carl from Interaction. Uh, Coach Duli, uh, will you also be in the hunt, in the hunt for uh, new Filipino players uh, based abroad who could join the team uh, during the Challenge Cup and the tournaments this year? The players here in Manila? 
No, are you also in the are you also in the uh will you also scout players who are who have Filipino blood uh, who could join the team? Not necessarily. Uh, I mean it's uh, if you if there's a good player out there, you know, playing in some of the professional leagues, you know, of course we would like to invite him and would like to bring him, add him to the team because you, you can see that, you know, when you play in, in those European league, Latin American league, in a professional level for five, six years, um, it's always a quality that this player had, he could add something to the team. If I'm really going out and scouting the players, I don't really have the time. So I'm more focused on the ones we have right now, and I think they are good enough to to uh, win the Challenge Cup. The scouting will be done by management. Uh, April. Welcome to the Philippines, Thank Thomas. You. I'm April from Football Lolita. Uh, well, we're all excited that you're on board and everybody waited for this day for a new coach, but what is your message to all the Filipino uh, fans, Philippine Ascals fans? That's really what my question is, your yeah. message. The <laughs> message is that I would like to make them happy when they watch the game of soccer here in the, in the country. So I really, like I said before, I love to play the game of soccer and I love to, still love to play the game. So and that's what I wanna do. I wanna let the, the players play the game that the fans are excited to watch. We had this experience in Germany that uh, before Jürgen Klinsmann took the job that nobody really was interested in watching the game anymore because it was boring. So, and then when he came, he changed the style of play and then suddenly it was, it was a great game to watch. And that's what I would like to do. I would like to play a nice, attractive, offensive mind with comp quick combinations and safe passing and all that stuff that really the fan who's watching the game says, oh, it looks actually pretty good, and I want to see more of those teams. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Let's talk about the scouting uh, players uh, in the European American leagues. Uh, was, th was there an effort to, to, to get uh, David Alaba, Munich, uh, ever? No. Uh, before I took over the national team, the Ascals, in 2010, David Delaba was already capped by Austria. So there was an interest for us to meet him, just to say hi, but <laughs> and so far as playing for the country, then he, he, he would have already have been ineligible. Follow up? Yes. And then uh, Bob. Is that really follow up? Uh, Coach Dooley, if, if, if there were a team that you would want your team to emulate, uh, I don't suppose you'd want Barcelona, but the, <coughs> there were a team that they could emulate. Which, which team would that be? One of those teams, Barcelona, Arsenal, Bayern Munich, Dortmund, <laughs> all the best teams in the world. Because you know what they do? They play simple. They play simple soccer. They play the way they face. So, but you have to be technically good. It's, it's sometimes the players make it too difficult. If I'm passing you the ball and I have to spin the ball and I have to play with the outside of the foot, I make it difficult for you to receive it. Why not playing the ball with the inside? You can see that sometimes they just want to chip the ball, they want to be outstanding. You be outstanding when you don't lose the ball. That's how simple it is. And you see those teams, they, they are perfect in the basics of the game. The fundamentals of the game, that's what we have to make perfect. Arsenal, Dortmund, Dortmund, for example, how they put pressure on the defender, how quick they try to win the ball back as soon as they lose it. Everybody is running, everybody is working hard. That's, it's a great team, great team. And you see the other ones, your individual players. You, everybody, <coughs> everybody is individually has some potential, good players. But you have to bring it into the team. And look at Barcelona, they play, you know, you don't touch the ball for five, six minutes, they give it to Messi and he's doing everything on his own. We don't have a Messi yet, so we have to do a little bit more. Is it too early to dream about <laughs> I'm dreaming about the Challenge Cup at the moment. So this is the most important thing, and I don't even want to think about the Asian uh, tournament. It's, it's right now, it's just right, always step by step. So always, for me, it was, you know, when I grew up and I, you know, my whole life, when I was young, 17, 18 years, I, I read a book, The Power of Subconscious Mind, and setting goals 
that's what you have to do. You have to set a clear goal. What do you want? There are five things for, to be successful. So one is you have to have a clear goal. The clear goal is to win the Challenge Cup. The second thing is you have to have a plan. How to achieve that? And there are different things that you have to write down how to achieve it. The third thing is you have to do it. You have to go out and do all those things that you have on paper to get it done. The fourth thing is that you have to believe that when you do this, you can achieve it. And the fifth thing you have to dream it. You have to dream that you win that Challenge Cup. And I think that's what something that I would like to bring into the head of the players, thinking about that tournament. Forget about the World Cup. It's great to play in the World Cup, believe me. It's unbelievable. But we are so far away from that, if we don't win the Challenge Cup, we can dream the next 25 years for that. But if we can win that Challenge Cup, that will be have, we have another goal then. But right now, just that's the only thing that we need to be focused on. Thank you. Uh, Bob and then the gentleman. Yes. Uh, Coach, you've obviously li been living in, this, in the U U.S. for a long time. Um, like your friend Jurgen Klinsmann, he lived in the States even before he coached the German team. Uh, and then he went to coach the MNT. Uh, it has been said that he brought a lot of uh, things that he learned from the States, like training and nu nutrition and fitness principles, uh, to the uh, to the Mannschaft when he coached them in 2006. Um, are you going to bring some of the things you learned living in the States to your in uh, to the Philippines now? If you bring a couple sponsors, maybe maybe we can do that, but. Uh, this is like the German Federation, they have a lot of money, so he could do that. And Jürgen was the one that, uh, the only one who took the job. Just remember that at that time, nobody wanted to coach the, the German national team. So Jürgen took the chance uh, and the opportunity to do that and changed his thing around. That's why he could actually also bring in whatever he wanted to bring in. So same as when he was the U.S. Uh, when I worked with him in the beginning of the U.S., he took all the possibilities, everything that he could get, to make the team better, he got from the Federation because the Federation had to go to the next level. But we are not in that stage because financially, obviously, we are not the US or we are not Germany. So we have to do what we can do with the possibility that we have. Definitely what we would like to do and you know, like analyzing the games. We want to analyze the opponents. Whatever we can have technology, that's what we want to use because there's something like match analysis that can help us. So those are the things that I definitely would like to bring in. Thank you. Sure. And then? Uh, I'm David with United Football. Um, since you were once connected with the U.S. national team, is there a chance that the Astros can have a friendly against them? Anything is possible. So uh, right now, obviously not, because they're preparing for the World Cup in the summer, so they have everything scheduled. But, you know, if we qualify, if we qualify, we win the Challenge Cup, and they have a good season in the in a World Cup. So, Jürgen, maybe he wants to play against us. Maybe he wants to come over, or maybe we can play over there. I had a conversation with him the last couple of days, and I told him that he shouldn't be scared about, about us because we are not playing the World Cup yet. <laughs> Thank you. Any memorable? I don't know how much time do we have. <laughs> I mean, obviously, Volk, every minute that I played for my country, I enjoyed. And the biggest thing, obviously, was when I was captain in 98. Even we had, there was a lot of things went wrong. But uh, the game against Colombia, when we won and we, qualified, well, we actually passed the first round, there was the biggest success for us. It was our goal at that time, like Germany wants to win the World Cup, for us was going through the first round with uh, the teams that we had, Switzerland, Colombia, and Romania. So that game against Colombia is, you know, we will never forget that. And in the league, I mean, when I played in the club teams, is uh, the championships that we won, the cup. I mean, we had Kaiserslautern, we won the term championship, and the Kaiserslautern had only 50, 60,000 people. When we won that <laughs> championship, we had 250,000 people in the city and, and celebrated with us. So those kind of games when you win 6-2 in Cologne, and uh, it's, it was great, so my whole soccer career was like, it's always in my mind. Yes, sir. Uh, coach, uh, the draw for the Challenge Cup will be conducted uh, next week. Uh, are you already familiar with uh, the opponents that we might face in the 
No, I I don't know a lot about them. So we just talked about getting all the information, what we can get from them. Um, I would call people that I know that might have a chance to know a little bit on the inside. So what we definitely <coughs> need are games, you know, that we know those players and um, just analyze those teams, those individual players and give it to our team that the players know who they play against. I haven't seen the infrastructure yet, so I know we talked a lot a lot about we have fields turf field that's great for for training. Um, it doesn't have to be full size field. Um, you can do all the stuff that uh, I have in mind. We can do that on a smaller field. Um, there will be training sessions on a bigger field, obviously, but um, you know this shouldn't be an excuse for anything. So I will check that out today and tomorrow just what we have over here and then we will make plans how we're going to use it. We have it from official source that uh, Rizal Memorial football field will be having an artificial turf by mid-April. Uh, there has been a slight delay because uh, uh, the PSC uh, has decided that the artificial turf should pass a FIFA two-star qualification or accreditation. Hopefully, we have them uh, mid-April. <coughs> like, uh, yes, I like it a lot. I mean, uh, one thing is uh, if you want to learn the basics of soccer and passing and receiving, that's the best to learn it, in my opinion. I liked, uh, I liked it a lot in, in, uh, in the U.S., uh, in California, the weather is also is very hot, and uh, so we use a lot of those turf fields, and it's it's great. It shouldn't be an excuse for anything, too. The Rizal Memorial. Is it again? The Rizal Memorial. The the news the news artificial turf is like a regular field. I mean, it's like regular grass. It's uh, it's not a bit depends what kind of we get for the stadium, but I think it would be one of the best ones. So it's uh, it's almost it's not the same, but you know if somebody who wants to play, you play that level a national team, you should be able to play on the turf field. The result turf will be FIFA two star, which is for international matches. You know that's the standard for international matches, like what they use in the Champions League in. CK, CKSA Moscow, with the same standard. <coughs> yeah, as soon as uh, Thomas will be working out with the coaching staff and the national teams uh, committee, then uh, they will come up with the schedules of the, uh, the trips that we have to, you know, the preparation schedules all the way to May. We're hoping to have as many friendlies as we can. Um, uh, right now, we already have uh, confirmed three uh, friendlies. So, Malaysia, Azerbaijan, and a, uh, a club team in Qatar. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have two games in Qatar, and then leading to the actual tournament, we hope to have two or three games more. Okay, uh, any more questions? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, we'll have a camp prior to uh, the ch first week of, first or second week of May. Well, th that's something that we will still have to uh, talk about, but we have 
we are already arranging with the host countries uh, that that will be our jump off point going to Maldives so from the Philippines we go to a training camp together with our European players and then from the training camp we go straight to Maldives okay. depends uh, we, we, we've, we've been offered uh, to be hosted by several countries which is a good thing for us but uh, we finally that is a decision that has to be made as soon as coach Thomas is fully aware of the whole uh, process well two weeks two weeks before Everybody's excited to come over. Well, I, I prefer that they commit to the coach, and uh, because they have to, he has to talk to them and uh, see also. Because I don't want to preempt his selection. Because while uh, I would want the coach to have the final say on who whom he would like to invite and uh, who the players will be. So uh, at the end of the day, it will be the coach's decision. But the players have expressed uh, their desire to play for the country. I think uh, a couple of days before the Azerbaijan game. <coughs> that's a, yeah, that's a FIFA, FIFA date. So that's we hope that everybody could come. You're welcome. Okay, so if there are no more questions, we'd like to invite everyone for a photo op. Um, please grab your cameras. Uh.